You're now listening to another episode of Strategy Snacks Podcast. This is episode 13, I believe. Episode 13. Um, thank you guys once again for tuning in and listening to this podcast. This is Strategy Snacks by Sean Marcano. Um, so this week I want to cover a couple things. Let's jump right into it. I want to cover a couple things um, like making good products, having good design, um, are the products that we create uh, actually helping and solving problems? And uh, what else do I have over here? Oh, uh, most problematic uh, thing for me and like car interfaces and similar interfaces like that. All right. So uh, once again, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, so for let's start off with what I've been doing. Um, I have been uh, kind of diving into and like getting into paintball a little bit. Uh, so I've been like watching a lot of videos, finally got my first uh, marker and equipment and stuff like that. Uh, so I'm really, really happy uh, for that and excited to see like where that can go and um, like do something a little bit different outside of like the norm, like being able to get out the house and uh, even though we're like in quarantine and lockdown and stuff like that, I still want to take advantage of like nature and still get out there and interact and you know join different communities. Uh, like I said, like the previous episode, episode 12. Um, and yeah, so I'm looking, I'm really looking forward to that. Hope everybody's doing well. Hope everybody is, is safe uh, and all that. Uh, seeing as how we've been dealing with a lot of obviously health problems, health issues. Um, but most importantly, we just had our elections. And oh, breaking news. ESPN's getting free ad on my site. Uh, podcast <laughs> but um most recently we had a, an election and that ha- had me awake and i'm pretty sure millions of other people awake for hours and hours and hours shout out to steve kranaki <laughs> for everybody who's watching him um it, it was it was wild it was definitely wild watching the elections this year i think everybody was at the tip of like <laughs> like on edge it was on the edge of their seats um I know for myself, I was, I could barely sleep out those couple of days. And uh, after a while we knew who the winner was. And so, uh, you know, hopefully everybody should be happy about that. I know there's half the country probably isn't, but you know, it is what it is. But, uh, yeah, that's the reason why I skipped last week's episode. Uh, it just felt like there are more pressing issues at hand or more pressing situations to deal with and, and to face. And so I hope that that wasn't mistaken or misunderstood by people. Um, so I am being consistent with, I'm trying my best to be consistent at least, but, um, I had to skip that week because I know that there was a lot going on as far as how long the election spread out. And I don't want to take that attention from, or like kind of divert attention from where it should be, um, since it kind of affects the world. So yeah. Um, yeah, back to paintballing. So (laughs) I'm really happy. I'm really excited. I'm going this Saturday. Um, I'm really excited. So this Saturday, I am going to be going to one or I, mean, I don't know which field I'm going to be going to. Maybe PA, maybe upstate New York. Um, so if you have any field suggestions, feel free to write it down in the comments. I would definitely like to check some stuff out. Uh, I'm going to be doing a mag fed event. So if anybody knows what that is, it's not the hopper. The hopper is the big part on the top that you like put in a bunch of like uh, paintballs inside. It is mag fed. So it, you have a clip filled with the... Uh, paintballs and so you have a a certain amount of ammunition that you need to have or could have potentially and then you like if you run out of ammo you have to reload (coughs) pardon me which makes it more realistic so on and so forth so yeah i will be doing magfit events um more updates on myself oh uh recently made some new progress on a client that i've been working on it's for a charter school like I, i think i brought this point up before Um, But I made some significant progress uh, moving on to the next phase of the project. So I'm really excited for that. If you attend or are somewhere in D.C., uh, check out Paul Charter School. Um, Big shout out to them. I'm glad that they trust me and reached out to me to be able to, like, create this new identity and work on the new project for them. So um, really exciting things going on for that. The next thing I also want to bring up is. Oh, some big news coming up and I don't want to share just yet. Just want to put that out there. Uh, cause I don't want to mess up other stuff going on. Um, 
is I have some potential big news, so that's that's pretty exciting. Uh, so if that ever falls through, I will drop it on the podcast and we'll let you guys know first. Um, what else? Oh, so back to design. So recently, I was talking about how Adobe XD and Adobe Max, and they did a, a big update. Uh, there were a lot of big changes going on, and I was ex- I was waiting for Figma to release an update. Uh, and for Figma to release their variants and such. Um, wow, Figma, amazing. Like you're cutting down, creating 40, 50, 60 different components and really minimizing it and bringing it down to like four or five. Like it's it's really wild um, what you can do with variants. It's, it's nuts. So a variant is, for those that do not know about design or about Figma and how these kind of like components and stuff like that work, is instead of you having, we create a button, right? And if you use a website, right, you press this button, you're seeing one state of this button. Now, if you, or even not even just a button, but anything in general that you see on a website or app. But if you see this thing, you're seeing one state. Now, if you hover over it, or say you press down on it or tap down on it, you're seeing another state. Now, when you press down harder or you drag it, you're seeing another state, right? Like, so there's iterations of all of these components that need to be designed. And that's on the design side of like this experience, like this user experience, right? So there's all these various different states. And so what these variants do instead of you having to like figure out okay what state is this in etc i can just create this variant of these states and and so you're you're basically compressing or compiling all of these various different states into one component so that when i begin to prototype it i just drag that one uh component and then now i can i can just interact with it and when i and i can basically tell it that when it's on its hover state it does this or when you do this it's in its hover state or when you do that it's in its focus state and you do it one time and then it applies to all of your boards all of your frames if you will so really we're saving a lot of time uh saving a lot of like it can minimize your workflow on figma like i would definitely say 200 percent. Like, i think you can execute designs so much faster using this like variance kind of system So if you have a design system out there, make sure you're taking out your time to redo that design system so that it aligns with the variants. Please, please, please do that. Um, Okay, so the next thing I also wanna bring up is the Apple event. This new M1 chip that's coming out. I try to cover like technology and design and, oh my God, it's like burp all the fucking time. So um, Apple's dropping the new M1 chip. Oh yeah, I was saying, so, I try to like tie in technology and design and kind of tell you guys what's going on in my life all wrapped around into this podcast. So follow me. Like I'm going to connect it all together because everything affects the other. So Apple was Apple event dropped the M1 chip and do a lot of shots at Microsoft. So if you didn't see those, it was kind of funny. Um, they brought back the Microsoft guy, um, throwing a lot of shots towards him and Microsoft in general, but you know how that battle is kind of eternal, so it is what it is. Uh, the M1 chip is big news because it, they call it a silicone, right? That's that's what they that's what they say. So what happens is when you're dealing with another company creating a hardware for your device that you create or you design, etc., you have to design around the constraint of what that hardware can do right so imagine you're a chef in a kitchen and you everything in the kitchen you grow you raise that's all everything is you like you know all of your ingredients but in order for you to move forward with a dish right you need to wait for just this one company that or this one person that brings to you every day your i would say i don't know maybe plates and i don't say plates but say, I don't know, a utensil or bread or a a water maybe, right? So you can't serve a dish without serving them water, right? Or uh, that's a little tough one. The point is (laughs) the fact that the M1 chip is being made at Apple is that they can begin to tailor 
all of their apps, their phone, like every anything that runs off of that that chip, they can essentially not deal with any kind of bottlenecking or any kind of like throttling that what another company has put into place or you know a company like Intel or AMD, right? Like they have their own constraints, the, the, the things that bottleneck their products. But when you're dealing with a company that creates its own hardware and the device that you put that hardware in or the chip that you put the hardware in, right? Uh, pardon me, the chip that you put that... Yeah, I said it right. The chip that you put your hardware in, um, you 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 make it to how you... You tailor it to how you want, right? So there's nothing holding you back besides yourself. And I think that's the beauty of it. Long story short, right? The beauty of it is that you're creating everything in one place and you have your own secrets. You have your own trade secrets for your own devices, right? And that's pretty amazing. And I'm, I'm really excited about that. And I, th I, th I think you can get that from how I'm talking about it. It's really exciting to see because they're tailoring it to have a way, way better customized experience. Um, so let's see what happens. I, they're, they're kind of suggesting and what, I, what I've seen from like some of the Geekbench and the benchmark scores of like the Apple... Is the, the Air, Mac Air, MacBook Air, right? Or the iPad Air, one of the, I think the MacBook Air. Um, I think they took out the fan because it runs so cool. One. Two, they also are saying that it's faster than the Mac 16-inch, if I'm not mistaken. So really, 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 really cool. Um, really fast. And I just want to get it in my hands and, and see what happens because... It can mean a lot, you know. I might just be faster than some of the devices I might have here. I think I might get rid of this machine here. I was looking at like some of the the, the presentation. I was like, well, I might get rid of my Windows and see what happens, right? So I don't know. And I, I am definitely gonna trade in this uh this Mac Mini that I have here for a faster one, maybe. Okay. So now next thing, uh. I wanted to bring up a couple of questions. I talked about this earlier is who are we affecting when we design things? Guys, please take this into consideration when you design stuff, right? What are you creating? How are you creating it? And who does it affect? Right? Keep these con keep these constraints in mind when you're designing and creating things. Uh, Big part because you don't want to waste your time creating something or designing something when it doesn't help anybody. It's not solving any kind of problem. And two, if you are solving a problem, think who else it might affect because everything affects the other. So I'm going to throw an example. I was just listening to the, I think, Pudget, I think it's called Pudget uh, World Usability Day. It's like World Sound Usability Day or something like that. And I was listening to one of the speakers and I don't remember her name. I can definitely put that in the show notes, but I remember her name and she was basically saying how an app, the interface of the Boeing 737, 737, 737, Max, the one that was crashing all the time, um, how that is a problem that faced humanity. I hope it, it killed a lot of people, um, but it comes down to everybody that was in charge of creating that product, right? from the designers to the engineers to mechanical, right? It, you can't just boil down and pin it on the engineers, right? Like everybody part of that table discussion in designing that product is at fault, right? Because when it comes down to a human life, you can't just disregard, you can't like this disregard it and say, well, it's their fault and not take any kind of, an, uh, any kind of accountability for what happened uh, of what's happening or happened in the past um, to people, right? Like there's a lot of souls that died. So when I say, who are you affecting when you design stuff? It's if I'm designing a, an interface for a candy shop, right? Yes, it might be simple where it's like, well, you can come into this candy shop and purchase your own candies, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? But now, by me doing this, am I getting rid of people that potentially could work there? Employees? Am I harming that kind of infrastructure? Am I, am I harming that ecosystem? Um, 
am I affecting potential? Uh, I mean, what else could be, what else could be a problem there? Uh, not that lives might be at risk, right? It can be so much as that it's affecting someone's employment or it could be a health hazard because now many people are coming here. So is the product that you're creating, is the infrastructure ready for that product that you're creating, right? There's a lot that goes into play. And I just want to throw that kind of like wrench in there for people to take that in consideration when they're designing stuff. It's like, what are we, who are we affecting? Be cognizant of that kind of stuff. As a designer, we have to be aware, like socially aware and just globally aware, like what's going on? Who are we affecting? Um, and not to say that you have to solve every problem in the world, because sometimes you might create something with the right intent. And then in general, down the line, like that might evolve into other problems and you have to design for those problems that you've then created with the product that you created with the intent of not harming people. Right. So, um, yeah, like begin to think outside of the box, begin to think outside of the circle in which you're in, because there's a lot of people that can be affected with the stuff that you create. Long story short. And then back to my original point of is what we're creating really solving problems. Sometimes we're creating more issues than if we were just to leave the problem that we thought was a problem at hand and left it alone. Or maybe if we did create something or design something for a problem that we wanted to solve, um, we're not probably thinking it's, we're not, we're probably not creating the right solution for the problem at hand if we're not really solving anything. Or maybe we're just creating artwork, right? Like this is just something like a creative idea we thought was cool and it may not be helping out anybody. So yes, take that in consideration as well. Um, think about the problems that you're, the products that you're creating <clears throat> and if they're really all solving problems or just creating something just because it's cool and it might be all right to, or nice to have it in, in your, your product. <sighs> Which leads me to my biggest problem I've been dealing with, not dealing with, but have faced, have seen, have dealt with our car interfaces. The, I, I think the most useless, I don't say useless, they're horrible. Like the like car interfaces are horrible design. I just feel like there's lack of integration in some instances between the car experience itself and the interface of and the interface of the the interface that it has, right? I feel sometimes it can be very overzealous. I feel it can be very out there sometimes. I think they try to do too much. Whereas I think if they kept it a bit more simple, um I think they'll be I think I think it'll lead to better results in the car's operation. Uh, less accidents potentially again these are my this is my hypothesis is me thinking about it in that way um i also feel like they should take advantage of like data visualization a bit better um how you present the data that you're like you like the, that the car has so for example instead of using like uh like better use of like for example the like showcasing your tires uh, pressure, right? Or something like gas, right? Instead of showing me a meter, right? Show me something different. Show me a bar. Like what's the max that I have? Uh, how further down that bar? What's the best, a better use of visuals that we can tell a different story or a better, more accurate story of the stuff that our car deals with and faces, right? Like it can potentially say, if I go into my, the interface of my car, and now I can, I can now visualize how much of the oil is left or how, how good is the oil based on the, uh, the interest I'm creating, right? Like the, the visualization of that data, that information that exists already, just having the, and we have this, we have sensors, we have uh, all kinds of like, um, of gauges, right? That, that we have within a vehicle, but if we can visually see it and depict it. I think it would lead to healthier cars. Um, I think it would lead to uh, safer lives, um, less accidents, um, all kinds of stuff. I think if we can visualize that information in a different way, if we can story tell our vehicle in a different, in a 
different sense. And this is me thinking like, this is me thinking on in, in the, in the like design thinking a little bit. Like if we can, if we can pivot what we've done before because we feel that it works. If what works, don't break. You know, don't it, it don't remake the wheel kind of thing, right? I think if my hypothesis is if we can visualize that information already in a different way, we can help people out a bit better. Um. Again, this is coming from my personal bias. That's why I, I does not back my kind of data or information. Um, I just feel it'd be helpful and beneficial to other people and other other users of vehicles. Because I feel like vehicle user experience ass. Like it sucks. Like, <laughs> and this is no shot to like other designers that have worked in this space. Because obviously you guys do an, an immense and important job. And I'm not saying that it's not a bad. I'm not saying it's a bad. I'm just saying it could be done differently now with the, the the tools that we have nowadays and what people are used to because over time people get accustomed to different icons people get accustomed to different different visuals people get accustomed to different interfaces um i think everybody is used to swiping and tapping and using their thumb and their fingers for stuff and to have an interface where you have to now you have to interface with the vehicle using a steering wheel and now use a mouse in your car i think is a little bit counterintuitive where why do i should be able to tap and touch and move stuff around without even having to or even speak right like using your voice as the the way to interface with the car um or or facial recognition right like we have this technology and i, I believe that if it's taken advantage in the right way i think the future of cars is an amazing place to be in um i feel like what can be what is possible and what can be done is pretty wild right if 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 we had like tesla i think it's pushing the boundary uh completely i feel like they've pushed the boundary so far um 10 times like they're the car of what we thought we wanted as a, as a kid <laughs> pardon me and of course and like they said like tony tony would have flying cars I mean that could be that could be a feature we can have, but um, I, I would definitely think that a company like Tesla or like coming up, I think there's a company now, Polestar, and a couple of companies are getting into like the EV world, right? But just you're a little bit behind, and it's okay, it's completely fine. But if you can re instead of creating ten thousand copies of what already exists, how can you push the wheel? How can you push the boundary? Um, and ways that help people, ways that solve problems for people, right? That is the space in which new products can be created in which um, new solutions can now be, you know, uh, implemented, new problems can be solved, right? I think there's a space there that's being untapped, or maybe it is being tapped, and I just don't know about it, um, but it's, or not being pushed out just yet because it needs to transition to get there. If that be the case, then so be it, right? If that be the case, then so be it. But I just feel that there's a lot that can be done now that isn't being done and I mean, give or take, I think th there's not much time for for waiting. We're in a place where like our our planet is dying. Like you're constantly seeing like global warming being an issue, climate change being an issue. And if you're you're fully facing a global issue that affects everybody, right? What can we do now that can shift that? And, and pivot the scale a little bit um, or a lot of it because that's what we need that helps the world globally it's global focus it's global it's, it's human centered not just human centered but global centered right like it's world centered uh, and is ethical right it, it, it makes sense that it doesn't hurt anybody in a sense right it's not hurting anybody it's not making people lose jobs killing people we're not making planes and cars crash. You know, if we mess up in design in that space, then there's only so far we can go. If we can't get past these these humps and hills. So I say that to say this. I want to leave you with today's strategy snacks. I know today's episode is a little bit short, um, but it's just some things I wanted to get off my mind and, and recap uh, since like the elections and such. But uh, what I wanted to drop today was what you do affects others. Uh, that's today's strategy snack, not just on a personable level, but what you create 
what you design, the businesses you start, all of those things affect other people. And, and I, I think that is such a powerful takeaway from this episode. Um, now, I hope that you guys take that into consideration. And hopefully this sparks some sort of creative juices flowing for any designers out there or any potential business owners. Um, yeah, so what, what you do affects others. Because because There's so much that can be done. But um, if we're not doing it in a way that helps the world, if we're not doing it in a way that helps other people, there's no point in doing that. It's a waste of time. It's not making it. I'm not saying making it. It's a waste of time. But in, in the design sense, you're not adding anything to the world, right? You're just taking up space. And and that that's a hard, hard, like, what is it? Cookie to bite, hard, hard, tough cookie to bite, right? If, if we're not helping change the position, and if we're... If we're not adding to anything positively, we're just wasting space. If we're not impacting the world in a way that is beneficial, we're no more than just another toxic, a toxin or bacteria, right? Like we need to be able to, we need to help other people. I think long story short, <laughs> make positive change and, and just understand that what you do affects other people. So thank you guys. Uh, that's a wrap up for today's episode of strategy snacks. So just a reminder, make sure if you're checking this out on YouTube, do subscribe, subscribe, please. That does help me out. Put in your notification, check all the episodes. Um, make sure if you're listening to this via podcast, you are liking this, uh, subscribe to this podcast, subscribe to strategy snacks. Cause it does again, help me out. You get the notifications first for when these episodes drop. And on top of that, I do, uh, I will be pushing out some new merch for Strategy Snacks, so make sure you guys keep an eye out for that as well. Next thing, if you want to purchase this t-shirt that I have on, check out rivalco.com. That's R we, I can't even spell, right? R-Y-V-I-L-C-O.com. All right, if you want to purchase this shirt, I have a bunch of, uh, clo- uh, like a new season of clothes coming out soon as well, but if you want to catch out, catch any of the clothes that, uh, before this season closes, feel free to check out rivalco.com. Um, I'll be pushing out a lot of like merchandise and clothing lines throughout just that, not a lot of clothes throughout the clothing line. Um, next thing is if you have any ideas, if you would like to collaborate on a podcast, if you have something good to say, I have a couple uh, upcoming interviewees lined up and some episodes recorded. So if you want to listen to that, make sure again you subscribe to this and you reach out, uh, reach out to me in the show notes. Uh, it's my email, smarcano10, or via social media at stratsnackspod, uh, and reach out to me if you want to hop on the show. I appreciate you guys for taking another week to listen to me uh, and for holding on to the elections, and I hope everybody out there is safe and is taking care of themselves. Take care, y'all. It's Sean.